Well, I'm back again. Got my glasses on. I hope you saw the video where I was showing you all of my pretty glasses. Well, I put them all away, gathered them up and put them in the basket and, and the few in, back in my purse and the ones that I wear to read my computer. So I started looking and of course they were the sparkly red ones. And they're the ones I like to wear. And they, they work better. Couldn't find them. Couldn't find them. Now where could they be? I looked table to table, chest to chest, drawers, everywhere I could think to look. Went in the kitchen. Why would I have them in the kitchen and leave them in the kitchen? So I got thinking, oh, have I taken them outside and have I lost them? I just can't lose my red glasses. So I went to the mail room. They weren't there. People usually, there's a little box there for when we're lost and found it. I thought, sure, I'd open that box and that would be my red glasses. No, they weren't there. Ran into one of my neighbors and she started making suggestions to me. No, I've done all of that. So I went outside. I'd been reading outside yesterday. I was reading uh, where the crawdads sing. Uh, I started out reading that book and I couldn't get into it. It took me a long time to get into it. Finally, I got to where I was staying with it and it was getting better and better. And I'm telling you, it is a good book and next week I'm going to see the movie. I'll let you know how that is if you haven't already seen it. So anyway, I didn't find my glasses out there. I came back upstairs and I thought, I, I just don't know where they could be. I haven't been anywhere in the car. Walked into the bathroom there. They laid on the bathroom sink. Yeah, we all do those things, I know. So I found my red glasses, but I'm not wearing them today. I'm going back to uh, the table setting. I hope you enjoyed the, the two tables that I set for you a few days ago, because I really enjoy setting tables. And with all my little things I've collected here and there, two pieces here, four pieces there, uh, they play settings somewhere else, and I, I've just got odds and ends of anything and everything, and I said, oh, I know what I want to do. I want to set another table, and first I'm gonna show you, you know how I removed the tablecloth, and there was a tablecloth under that one. Well, in this case, I'm gonna lift the table uh, cloth a little bit so you can see it. And what you're gonna see first is a nice, beautiful lace tablecloth. The reason for that is I wanted this gold plaid tablecloth, but it was too simple. I wanted to dress it up a little. This is the tablecloth. So I put it on first and I laid my lace tablecloth on top of it. And I think you can see on the video how pretty it looks. It dresses it up just enough and there's not too much of the gold showing. So that's one idea you can use whenever you're trying to simplify the tablecloth situation. Now, the dishes I'm using, I found at Goodwill. They're Linux, made in the USA. That's number one point. And they're beautiful. And when I saw them, another lady was going through the dishes. There was a whole set. And I was waiting till she finished. And when she finished, she had taken all of the plates, except one. This is the plate. It's got little leaf type designs in gold and red, a deep wine red. Very, very pretty, very elegant. 
I got one plate that she left. She took cups and saucers, some other things, and when she finished, this is what I got. I got the one dinner plate. Then I got the salad plate. Got four of them. Next was, I suppose this is your bread and butter plate. It's a little bit large. It could be used for small salad too. And they are really very, very pretty. So I thought, what am I going to do? There's just touches of the dark red. What have I got that I can accent with? Well, the first thing I knew I had were these beautiful champagne glasses. I think they're champagne glasses, but I only have two. Now, I've set my table for two, and my centerpiece, I'm trying to keep them low because I don't like tall centerpieces where you can't see across the table. That, that's a stigma with me. So I've tried to keep the centerpiece low, and I'm just doing two place settings because that's all I need to demonstrate my table setting. So I had the two glasses. They're beautiful glasses. And by the way, if you run across any of them, let me know. You buy them and I'll pay you for them. I have, I've been looking. I haven't found any more. But they're beautiful glasses. All right, that took in some of my red. Well, another thing I... Uh, let me get this. Next thing I found at Goodwill were placemats. And these have this shiny, uh, the, you know, the soft and the uh, shiny squares. Very, very nice. I know these have never been used. Dollar a piece. I said, these are gonna work for Christmas. I better get them, so I did. Anyway, drop that in the chair. So next you see, you can see my placemat. And my chargers are a soft shade of gold. I might as well pull it around so that you can see it better. We'll just set the plates. Here, here is my gold charger, my placemat. Next, since I didn't have a dinner plate, what was I gonna do? I had to have a dinner plate. So I took one of my independence plates, the eight-sided plate, I put it on the charger and you see these little doilies? I got these at an estate sale. There were several of them. And they're so pretty. I laid one right on the plate. Just detoned down the white. And the next thing I did, I put my salad plate in the center of that. And you can see the lace around the edges. I'm using dainty napkins, not great big bulky ones. These sit right there like that. And next comes my bread and butter plate. And on top of it is another small doily, just like the large one. I've got three sizes of these. I set it right in the middle. And this is the beauty of them all. Here is my soup cup. You see this beautiful soup cup? I hope the light hits it well enough. But I was so glad the lady didn't take them. So I have four of them. And they sit right there. Now there, you've got my place setting. Although I wasn't able to complete it with one pattern, I was able to make a beautiful place setting with the gold charger and the red placemat. 
Of course, you've seen my little them test cup and saucers. You're probably going to see them a lot more because I, I like them so well, and they seem to just go with everything. And they look beautiful sitting right here on the corner. It's like they go with the set. All right. I needed more red and gold. Here you see my brass candle holders. I got these candle holders from a young lady who was the daughter of an old, old friend of mine. Her mother had died several years ago and they were having an estate sale. So I took the brass candle holders that had been my friends. She was a jewel. Now, <clears throat> more red. Can you see this big platter? This is huge. And it has a big bowl that sits in the middle, but I didn't need the bowl. But it's such a beautiful piece. That was another thing I got at Goodwill. When I saw it, I had to have it. Of course I had to have it. I didn't need it. Didn't know what I was going to do with it. But I still had to have it, and it came home with me. And it's definitely going to be one of my pieces when Christmas comes. You're going to see it shining. We'll go to another set here. This is something I bought in Seabrook, South Carolina. I'm going to, I put some little knick-knack things. There's some cookies in here. But I'm going to show you how these work. There's three different dishes and they sit inside each other like this. And you separate them and you can fill them with party treats. These are little sandwiches, these are cookies. And this is the lid that completes the set. And when I saw this set, can you see it? When I saw it, I said, that's going home with me. And it did. I used a little bit of my Fostoria. None of these things go together. They're all in separate sets. Here's my small candy dish. I put a little, few strawberries and blueberries in there. And this sits on the table right here. On the other end, it's a larger candy dish. It's Vastoria too. It has a lid also. And these fruits look very pretty sitting on the table. Well, just by chance, I had two little bitty bowls. I didn't know what they're for. I don't care what they're for as long as they serve my purpose. So I only had two. So I decided I'd set it to the side. And when you eat a strawberry that still has the top on it, you can put your, the waste in the little dish. And it looked pretty on the table as well. So you always have to have candles. Candles are a necessity. Uh, let's see what I want to go around to next. I'll come around here, and this I have to show you. I have to show you this up close. I've had this 28 years. This was the trip or the cruise I went on when I won the magazine contest. I sailed on the Queen Elizabeth II, 
and I took a land tour for nine days. And on that land tour, we went to a place called, well, you, you, you're getting a glare because that's the mirror effect. This is the platinum over China. This is a Saddler teapot. When I saw it, I said, I've got to have that. So I put it in my camera case and carried it around in the camera cases case so it wouldn't get broken. But I want you to see it up close. It's a beautiful piece. Um, I've never used it, but I've always wanted to use it. But I thought it was perfect for tea to sit on the table. Now the thing about the place we had, we went to several different places in England and Scotland. And we were in a place called Clang, let's see, how was it? Yeah, Clangoughlin, Wales. It was spelled with the double L, A-N-G-O-L-E-N. I looked at that and I said, Langolan. Nice man on the street, very thick accent, barely could understand what he was saying. He explained to me, the name of this town is Clangoughlin. So I always remembered that. I, I wanted to make sure when I saw it written or was talking to anyone that might be from Wales, I'd know the correct pronunciation of Clangoughlin. Oh, it's, and the other thing, you know when you're doing your crossword puzzles, one of the shortest words you always come across in those crossword puzzles is the river D, D E E. How many times have you seen that in a crossword puzzle? Well, I stood on a bridge facing the river D, and it's one of the most beautiful sights I've ever seen. The rocks in the river flowed down, and the, the rocks didn't flow, the water flowed down over the rocks. It was just gorgeous. There was a train station up to, on the hill up to one side, and ahead of me was a mountain. And I'm standing on a bridge taking pictures of the river and it's pouring down the rain. That rain didn't stop me. I had to have the pictures and actually that was one of the pictures I had enlarged to poster size. Really pretty. I wish I had it to show you. So anyway, that's where my teapot came from, was Clangoughlin, Wales. I'm trying to think, oh, this is another glass. This is a water glass. I don't know the pattern. Someone told me what the pattern was, but I don't have very good memory. But I've got two sizes of these glasses. They also came from Goodwill, 99 cents each. What I'm telling you is you can do this as easily as I did. I fill my big platter with artificial fruits and berries and little red flowers on the edges that match. And that's my centerpiece. Here's one of my doilies. I can lay it in the plate, put another salad plate on top of that. And that crocheted edging just gives it a finish, finishing touch you can't see it from there, but around the edge of this salad plate is the doily. It just gives it that extra flair that you want. You want the thing that people are going to notice. And again, I have my Demitasse cups and saucers, and I also have my Demitasse spoons 
that were given to me for my birthday. I've mentioned this before. Friend, she, the top person knows exactly what to give you. And she did. She gave me two sets of the Demitas spoons, and I think they're just precious. So I'll be using those eventually. I wanted to make this video kind of short and sweet, but I also wanted you to know how many different items you can use, how different, many different patterns you can use and still set a beautiful table. I may just move my camera over the table so that you can get a closer look. It may wiggle a little bit, but I wiggle too, so I'm hoping you can. Uh, let's see. Let's go around to the place setting. Take a look. This is the end of the table. There's your place setting. Whoops. There's your table setting. There's your napkin. There's the dolly that separates. There's the small dolly that separates those. And then of course, I'll pull it back and let you see it from a distance. I'm gonna set this down. Go back to my chair. And if you've enjoyed the, oh gosh, my hair looks awful. Uh, if you've enjoyed this table setting and the other two that I showed you, please let me know. And if you want to see more, I'm open for anything that you'd like me to to show you. Uh, I've got lots of other patterns that can be mixed and matched. And you can learn from this. I learned from this by watching a website called Beautiful Table Settings. The people that, the members on that website do beautiful jobs and you you learn so much and the questions you've always wanted to ask you had nobody to ask you can ask the members and they're very willing to tell you exactly what to do and how to do it so that's what I'm showing you today here's my little stack here's my little stack of dollies see them aren't they precious I like things like this, and you will too. So, I'm going to click you off, and the hair gets washed tonight. So, maybe it'll all look better next time. And you stick with me, share the video. See if you can't get a few people to subscribe to my website because I want to build it up. I want to get better and I want it to be more professional. I'm as amateurish as they come. With anything I do, I just tell it like it is or the way I know it to be. So thank you for watching me and I'm so pleased to be able to do this. So, and hope that you enjoy it too. Thank you.